This is Lukradowski of WeAreChange.org, joined today by John Snyson, economic historian, filling in for Tim Pichot, Pichot, Tim's taking a break, he's playing some tennis anyway. We got John Snyson on, and in this video, we are going to be going over all the very important economic news happening right now, as of course, the IMF just declared that the fallout from this sickness will be worse than the last financial crisis. And of course, just like with any crisis, the government's going to bail out their buddies, and that's exactly what they're doing, with some claiming that the Fed is running out of bubbles to create, but yet, still, we're seeing institutions, including large organizations, hedge, hedge fund organizations, like Citadel, that are going to benefit from this crisis tremendously. The same Citadel that our previous Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke, a person that I confronted on engineering one of the biggest robberies in world history with the last financial crisis. He tried to steal my microphone because of that question, but you can see that video on the main channel. But Ben Bernanke is now a senior advisor at Citadel, one of the companies that received his gift, his taxpayer bailout in 2008, and is benefiting from this crisis and will benefit from it more as one of the founders of Citadel also just raked in $870 million last year, paying himself $435,000 per hour. Meanwhile, the recession breadlines are already forming all throughout the country with the mainstream media scratching their head, asking the questions, are we in a depression? <laughs> are we headed for a depression? <laughs> and uh, if you've been watching this channel and if you've been watching coverage from John, yeah, yeah, how can you not? John, how are you seeing it, especially with the news that we just went over? Well, I, I've seen a depression since 2008. We basically, uh, the, uh, the whole bailout, uh, of uh, the banks and everything back in 2008. It was just a papering over uh, or electronic digital over uh, of the uh, the whole depression that started at the time. Uh, so we just currently have, you know, tried to, uh, uh, you know, hide that recession, that well, global depression that we entered. And then now we're, you know, trying to again do the same thing. But the problem is like now the bailout is not going to be 16 trillion. It's probably going to be like 78, 100 trillion, uh, maybe a quadrillion. Who knows how high they got to go? That's the problem is we, we can all have like quadrillion. Maybe we'll have a uh, patillion uh, and bailout at one point. But that's that's the thing here is that uh, we're, 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 we're just dead in depression. We just. Uh, don't see it because there's so much incredible amount of debt that is around there that, you know, they pumped into the system to keep us, you know, feeling that we are not in depression. They pumped it into uh, the real estate markets, the stock markets uh, to try to make people feel wealthy uh, in a certain way. But the problem is that now you have the baby boomers and everybody needs to sell assets into this massive, uh, you know, uh, the recession that we're entering in now that they call it. Now it's looking like they're going to call it a depression. Uh, so uh, we're having mass amounts of sellers that we didn't have last time. So that is, uh, you know, occurring on top pressure. But I think it's important that we go to a speech that Ben Bernanke had back in uh, 2002, because we're we're talking about Citadel and Ben Bernanke, of course, uh, getting bailed out. There's a senior advisor at Citadel now. Uh, and I, I just want to tell you exactly what the plan is, because this is this is just coming straight from the mouth. This was actually before he was a governor at the Federal Reserve. This was a 2002 speech when he was at the Federal Reserve. And let me just take a little snippet. This is like a paragraph out of that, uh, you know, massive speech that he had. Uh, it says here, of course, the U.S. government is not going to print money to, and distribute it willy nilly. Uh, well, I don't know. Although, as well uh, as we will see later, there are practical policies that appropriate that this behavior. So, uh, yeah, like now, for example, uh, normally money is injected into the economy through asset purchases by the Federal Reserve to stimulate aggregate spending when short term interest rates have reached zero. The Fed must expand the scale of its asset purchases or possibly expand the menu of assets that it buys. Alternatively, uh, the Fed could find other ways of injecting money into the system, um, uh, for example, by making low interest loans to banks uh, or cooperating with fiscal authorities. 
Each of these methods are of adding money to the economy has advantages and drawbacks, both technical and economic. One uh, important concern in practical in practice is that calibrating the economic effects of non uh, non standard means of injecting money may be difficult given our relative lack of experience with such policies. <laughs> lack of experience, funny. Uh, thus, uh, thus, as I have stressed already, uh, prevention of deflation remains preferable to having to cure it. Uh, if we do fall into deflation, which is happening now because of all the defaults, uh, however, we can take comfort in that the logic of the printing press example must assert itself and sufficient injections of money will ultimately always reverse deflation. So now we're you know, having all these massive faults and all this debt. And basically what it's saying here is that they're going to just print unlimited amounts of money to bail out everybody uh, to try to keep propping up asset prices and holding them at a level so we don't feel like we're losing money. Uh, and at one point, that inflationary pressure will win back again. But the problem is they're going to overprint so much that we potentially will end up, as we're having this debt default, we're going to have the inflation then is the pressure that, you know, is going to push the money into uh, worth nothing because people are not going to be willing to use it because the, uh, you know, uh, whatever even universal basic income that they push into the economy is not going to be enough to, uh, you know, keep up with the amount of printing of currency. So. You're going to see people, you know, getting uh, poorer and poorer. You're going to see that whole, like, the, the, the income disparity between rich and poor is just going to get greater and greater. And then it's just going to break down because there's no way out of this. Even I listen to Wall Street guys. They're saying that there's no way out of it other than pitchfork moments that's coming. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, one of the bigger things that we should understand here is is that it was extremely reckless behavior that was promoted, that was prioritized, that was rewarded, that led us here. But also the fact that a lot of people on the Wall Street and a lot of people in this whole financial system were making money just by using money. They weren't producing anything. There, there wasn't any service. There wasn't any manufacturing. And now these big lobbyists that essentially don't do anything, don't produce anything, don't do anything. They're all getting all the help and assistance that they want from the Federal Reserve that they're all tied into, like Citadel, like Black Cube, and all these other large institutions with all these Illuminati freaking names. They're helping themselves, right, get bailed out. Their losses are, are socialized. Their gains are privatized. Meanwhile, the small businesses, the media businesses that actually do provide a service, which the American economy is predominantly run by. Some of it is manufacturing, but it's mainly a service. That that institution is getting screwed over. There's this lending program now for $10,000 for, for allegedly small businesses. But one of the things they ask you, I went through the application yesterday. One of the things they ask you is, do you have 500 employees? What, what, what does a $10,000 loan go, going to do for me if I have a 500, 500 frickin' employees? It's, it's nothing. And, and this is considered small business, um, according that's to this lending bad. program? Yeah. yeah. That's bullshit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's, that's bull. Bad. Family friendly show here, John. No, no, no malarkey or hooey here. No, but, but again, and now they're calling for you know, more quantitative easing to reward more of this behavior. Uh, for the average person, uh, John, if you could explain to us, what is quantitative easing? What is QE? What is what is the simple layman's term? Because a lot of people just hear this word. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're like, oh yeah, but, but but how do you really explain the criminality of it? Yeah, so think about it this way. Think about if you defaulted on your loan, uh, the bank would then take your loan and say that, okay, John, you, your loan is defaulted on you. You you can't pay back. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give you. Let's say that you had a hundred thousand left on your more mortgage and you defaulted on it they're just going to give you a hundred thousand dollars back and then take your loan off of your uh you know uh, so you don't have that loan anymore uh that you owe anybody that's basically kind of in layman terms what it is it's a little it's quite more complex than that but that's you know in the easiest kind of term to to show you how you know it's basically bad investments that have gone bad that they can't pay back and the the federal reserve has their magical bank account that has zero uh in it that they just create you know x amount of electronic digits and then you just basically give them fresh money back for their uh bad investments that went to zero yep that these butt munches profit off of <laughs> and like and like this is so ridiculous this is so stupid this is so backwards and then uh, you know we have our political leadership 
banging their chest, being like, we're helping people save the economy. No, you're saving your friends, your buddies, while everyone else is suffering, and they're going to suffer a lot more. And and again, the government is it should never be the answer, it should never be the solution. They gave you a little check, right? But that's nothing compared to the bigger crimes, the bigger get that many of their insider friends are getting. And now what? What is Congress proposing? Congress is proposing... Some crazy people in the the House of Representatives are proposing a 50% tax on guns and ammunition. How else are you going to pay for this insanity, this debt, this this burden that, again, just, just completely robs you and your family of your wealth and the future of you? Just, just totally, just, just, just ripped away from you. And again, people even calculated the thousand two hundred dollars that they're getting. They're gonna have to make up for that in eight thousand dollars of of taxes. That's that's essentially the bottom line of it. If you actually follow the basic rules of how you know math works, uh, John. You also sent me a couple of other articles talking about specifically in in Europe and in India. Uh, let, let, let's go over those all really quickly. Yeah, so in Europe, actually, they wanted to create what's called Corona bonds, uh, which is very interesting uh, in itself, because what the proposal is, is that they're going to, for the first time ever in, in Europe's history, actually create Europe bonds. So it's not like a Greek bond or it's not like a uh, a bond of another country. It's actually European Union bonds that they're going to create. So that that is the first one. And another step, you know, they had their police, you know, they want to create one European police, a military unit. Now they're trying to create a, they really want just a one single central bank instead of all these other bank, uh, central banks around Europe. So it's just another step towards that model of, you know, one uh, one world type of currency, but on a, on a regional basis in Europe. So that's that's what the Corona bonds is. So basically, to bail out everybody and bond, you know, the uh, the bonds they want to. Uh, but it's of course most of this is debt. What we got to remember, uh, Luke, is that most of this bailout money uh, that you know is getting created by the governments uh, is also new debt that is added to the system. So they would just believe that they can print limited amounts of uh, of debt into existence because they believe that uh, the more and more de- you know we create. Uh, of course, uh, the lower you know the value of that debt is because it's higher inflation. Uh, but the problem is that if you get that deflationary pressure, they're going to just have to panic and and print uh, exorbitant amounts of money, and then you're going to end up you know with, with places like Venezuela where they had to raise they raised like the in, um, the minimum income up three thousand percent or whatever it was, and that didn't help. Uh, so you, you're just going to have uh, pressures like that happen. All across the world, and and of course, this is another European, you know, uh, trying to create that one world European state that they really are have been drilling on. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, this recession will finally end uh, the private sector debt super cycle, says firm that invented the term. So another, you know, I've been talking about uh, for a long time now um, what I called the the underlying massive bubble. So the, the biggest bubble that's out there, and that is in corporate debt. You know, we had all these, uh, you know, CEOs quitting their jobs. Uh, and then, of course, before that, you know, they had this share buyback. So they basically bought shares, but they bought it with debt that they borrowed uh, from the Federal Reserve and from banks. And, and then they propped up their share prices. And then, of course, that has created a massive amount of debt out there. And all that debt has then been put into derivatives called collateralized loan obligations, not the CDOs that crashed the, uh, you know, the that was backed with uh, housing debt mm-hmm. back in the uh, uh, 2008 mm-hmm. crisis. But now it's corporate debt mm-hmm. uh, crisis that we're heading into. Uh, so basically, uh, they, they've created another, uh, you know, massive, massive uh, bubble that's, uh, I, I think it's six or seven times bigger uh, the amount of underlying assets to the derivatives now than they were back in in 2008. So they just created a you know this bubble that is you know so uh, unbelievably higher than you know you can uh, have at any given time. And then um, just the last article that we uh, was interesting about India. You know India is extremely totalitarian through this coronavirus crisis. They you know shut down whole traffic everything. And then they go out and, you know, uh, you know, they whip people, people with, in the middle of the yeah. streets. They yeah. literally whip them with sticks yeah. for, for, for walking around or being in the grocery store. Yeah. In, in South Africa, they're shooting people waiting in line to get into the grocery store. In the Philippines, you know, in, in, in South Africa, they're shooting them with uh, with uh, rubber bullets. And in the Philippines, they're they're, uh, you know, 
killing people for being outside. So, yeah, sorry, John, go ahead. Yeah, now India has another scheme that they're going to turn off all the lights at 9 p.m. I, I forgot the date, but it's 9 p.m. for nine minutes. And then, of course, there's like massive because the government gets involved and wants to create something to, you know, uh, show the, you know, that we got to take care of this coronavirus crisis. Now there's like massive crisis in generating stations and everywhere because they're going to have massive surges in uh, in electricity. And that's going to, you know, put strain on all infrastructure so government doesn't think when it does anything does it and this is just another you know a show in that you know they're they're just a, a bunch of you know uh, idiots that are sitting up there that you know want to control you and, and of course that's what they're trying to do and and they would do no no less because now the government has you're seeing the oldest debt and oldest financial system falling apart around the world because we're uh, we never had the system on a global basis before this fiat currency system it's always been one uh, one or two countries that went on it now we got the whole globe and everybody's devaluing at the same time and everybody's saying like well the the prices you know between one currency to another hasn't changed much well uh, the prices that we're buying for all those currencies that we're buying real things and this is this is the case throughout any inflation or pressure and destroys any currency is that Real things like commodities that we need, like food, water, shelter, you know, all the like steel, iron, everything that we use or gasoline, whatever we use, will always keep it hold its value. And they wouldn't change too much uh, other than based on supply and demand, of course, that you see with oil now. But it's the actual uh, money uh, that's in circulation, the, the currency that gets printed by these uh, central banks around the world that actually create those uh, you know, uh, price changes. So if you say something is very uh, high in price, it's really it's the actual currency that's, uh, you know, uh, in too much supply. So the, the actual price gets higher and higher. But the actual commodity really stays very similar in price. If you were to barter one commodity for another commodity, they're very similar in price. For example, in gold, you know, one gold bought you a nice toga back in the day, uh, way back. And then now it's buying you a suit. So it's it's the same prices that you have almost throughout history on these things. Uh, but of course, they don't understand that these economists. Yeah. Meanwhile, you go to the supermarket. And again, the thing that you could buy for $20 just even a couple of years ago is a lot different than what you could buy with $20 now. Uh, and as Josh Sigerson would say, $20 is $20. But that's a whole nother different story that we're not going get, to get into here. Uh, John, thank you so much for filling in for Tim Pachetsu. Pachetsu. Tim, thank you so much. Thanks so much for. I still, I, I still have my money gun. Uh, if you're up for it, let's do another video. Uh, again, your link to your website. Where is it again? It's uh, theeconomictruth.org, and of course, talking about financials, we do have to talk about bankrun.org. Check it out. It's basically a bank run, uh, you know, a monitoring site that we're going to monitor bank runs around the world, and we got a lot of other ideas with it. So check that out. All right, we're going to continue the conversation in the next video with more social and political updates with the latest information. Stay tuned for more here on Change the News.